Okay, so I don't want to get too much into the details of how exactly to use these programs, how to set them all up, because it's complicated and you can find this information elsewhere, but I do want to show you the most important basics so that you don't think it's more complicated than it actually is. Basically what we're trying to do is set up what's called a host computer. That is the computer that you're going to connect to. That is the computer that has the audio interface and has all the microphones going into it. That is the one we need to set up as the host. And the host computer must have a minimum amount of specs. Mainly the graphics card can't be dirt old. So here are the minimum specs that you need, at least 4 gigabytes of RAM, at least Windows 8.1, a Core 2 Duo or better processor, and as far as the GPU, you need at least an Intel HD 4200 which is built into the processor, or if you have a third party graphics card, either an AMD Radeon HD 7750 or GTX 650 from the Nvidia side. They recommend, well you guys can read this, you can read the rest. It does not officially support Windows 7 for hosting, but my client computer, which is the one I'm connecting from, is Windows 7. If you guys are familiar with the taskbars and all that, you might recognize that. So, I want you to go to parsecgaming.com. Right now this is donationware, so you can try it out for free. And if you like it and want to support the developers, which I do recommend because this program is excellent. I was trying ones that cost money, and they weren't as good. They simply weren't as good. I'll show you some of the features. This is actually designed for video games, but it works extremely well for what we need to do with audio engineering. With one exception, it does not support ASIO from my understanding. And none of them do. Because ASIO is a different protocol, it's very specific to our audio needs, so I recommend the program Audio Movers Listen To, and unfortunately, it does cost money, it's either $4 for one week, $10 per month, or you can get it for a whole year for $100, but if you don't know how to use it, you can use it free for a week if you never tried it before. This is the main screen on Parsec. And before you share the link and get excited and all that, you need to change some options. So click on settings, little gearbox here. And under window mode, I would change it to full screen. Decoder mode on hardware because you want to use your graphics card instead of the software. It uses up a lot less computer power that way. Leave renderer to direct 3D 11. I have VSync off. For gaming, it might be better to be on. We'll just turn it on since it's default. Immersive mode is another gaming option. I just leave it off. Discord status, I'd say put off. Unless you're a gamer and then you can keep it on. And then come up here and click host. And we have more settings that are important. Enable hosting. Yes. Unless you're only using a computer for client. Again, the host is the one with the audio interface. The clients are the ones that don't have the audio interface. Resolution. By default, I believe this is on keep host resolution. I don't like that. I like all the computers to have the same resolution. So my recommendation is, for smaller screens, 1280 by 720. So if you're using a laptop, or if you're going to use a smartphone or smart tablet, change it to 720p it's easier to see things that way and easier to click on things because right now the mobile app isn't that good I'm just gonna be honest it's new they have a lot of time to develop it so either put it on 720p and I don't think yeah it does change immediately okay so 720p I guess it's bigger or if you're on a desktop PC with a larger monitor 1080 is the standard 16 by 9 my bandwidth limit, I think you can get away with like 20 megabytes a second. And I don't believe this is over Wi-Fi. I think it actually goes over the internet. So whatever your internet connection speed is, and this is another limiting factor, I don't believe it works directly on Wi-Fi through the router. So yes, you do need to have a decent internet connection. 
But let's see what it looks like on the lowest one. Just out of curiosity. For the rest of this tutorial, let's do it like that, right? And if you do have a better computer, HEVC, you can turn that on. But for my computer that I have right now, I'm going to leave that off. If you do use HEVC, then it's better quality at lower bit rates. Exclusive input mode. I have it on just to simplify things, but you might not need it. And this is if you have more than one monitor. You choose which one you want to use. Echo canceling. I have it on. I don't see a reason to have it off. Approved apps. I don't know. Uh, if something's not working, then maybe turn it on. And network settings. This is important in case you have a firewall. You need to put it on a port that is open. If you don't know what that means, then you probably don't use a firewall. Hotkeys. This is important because if you screw something up, you can come back and fix it. I would write these down so you learn them. And the important thing is, if you've noticed, there's this little box up here that normally would not be there if not for Parsec being open. You click that and it allows you to put this in windowed mode. I'll show you what that does. Window mode allows me to now minimize this and I am on my normal computer right now. All right, my Windows 7 computer. I'm now completely in the Windows 10 computer. And let's see what else. Chat. I guess so I can type to somebody if they are on the other computer. Nobody else is on the other computer right now. And also Discord probably works, but sometimes you just need to talk via text. Gamepad. Again, this is a video game thing. You don't need to worry about that. The account settings, which I'm not going to click, allows you to change your username, password, other things like that. All right, so let's go back to the sharing screen or the computers tab. Click that. Click the share button. And then it copies this to your clipboard. So you can go and open an email right now and send it to yourself. Or if you are on Facebook or Twitter, you can send a private message to yourself, whatever. Copy and paste that link that it generates. And then what you can do is on the remote computer, open up the email, click the link while Parsec is open. So yes, you have to install Parsec on the remote PC, obviously. Click that link and it should open in Parsec. And you'll be able to go back to this screen. I'll show you right here where you'll allow where it lets you connect to the computer that share and then once you're in you're gold so now I can change anything on this computer that I want to again I'm using the slower speed as you can see even at 5 megabits per second it's still pretty darn good but I'm gonna change it just so that it doesn't look so bad when I'm doing screen capture actually just so you can see that I'm not lying so, and it does look a little soft, but it's still sharp, you know? At least it is on my screen. So even at 5 megabits per second, it's usable. But I'm going to bump it back up to about 25. I believe that's the average in the USA for internet download speeds. All right. So the idea is that you're going to set yourself up a recording session template so that you are going to be having an audio console, but in the box. And the idea is, because you're isolated from the live room, from where the vocalist or where the instruments are being recorded, you can hear what things are and change them with plugins. Now, we're not going to actually use these plugins during the recording, but we're going to set them up so that once things are recorded, you can re-enable the plugins. And if for some reason your computer's not powerful enough and you can't do that, that's fine. But what I do is set the plugins up and then just disable them. Depending on your DAW or Reaper theme, this will be different. So after you set them up, disable, or you can go to FX, and then you can go to Save FX Chain and save this as Vocals Song Name FX. And then you can remove the plugins so that you're not using up RAM and a little bit of CPU, but mainly RAM. Because you don't want problems while you're recording, right? But the main thing 
The most important thing, you will not be able to hear audio if you're in ASIO mode. Okay? You won't. Let me simulate audio, okay? All right, let me go back to what I was saying earlier about starting the recording part. So the first thing you want to do is label all of your tracks with what they are. And what I do is space, hyphen, space, and then song name. Okay? Because anytime you record something, that'll be the first part of your file. You want to hit record enable, obviously. And then you want to turn record monitoring on. Not on automatic, because that's one of the options, but on. Although you could probably do automatic. But maybe put on automatic. Anyway, put it on regardless and do it for all your tracks. So that by the time you start on this, it'll look something like this. I'll put it on auto just so it looks different. Well, it does look different even on on, but whatever so all right let's just put it on auto for now so when you're normally recording see because I'm using this I can I can actually unmute this and if I unmute it I can then increase the fader and I can actually hear myself through the speakers but I can't right now because I think I had the volume too low check check yeah now I can hear myself you might not be able to hear me because the latency is so low and it's coming in faster than through a doll okay because it's that's just the way it goes and even even if i was listening to this through the pc i have my buffer setting so low that it's quick but if i were wearing headphones it'd be a lot easier to hear myself right now i could probably crank it up but then i'll get feedback i'm, I'm a little concerned about feedback happening hold on check 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 yeah there we go Check one, two, three. Check. Yeah. See, it's about the feedback. So um, now you can hear me. You should be able to hear me and the speakers. So normally you can do this if you're on the, we'll call it host PC, the one with the audio interface. But you can't do that because you're on the remote PC. But, you know, your person that you're recording can because ideally they have what's called a Q mix. And you'll see that on here it says Q Master. And then down here, there's actually another setting. And I have it disabled right now because I only have my speakers going. Let me, let me uh, mute this and lower the volume again. So I have this muted, but normally if I'm recording somebody, they're going to be listening through the Q, okay? And their levels are different from mine. I usually just have them cranked up by default, but I can actually send a different mix to them through this Q master, through this Q mix, doll three and four inside of Reaper. I cannot do this right now because I'm not in ASIO mode. That's the one thing about, oh wait, I am. I am in ASIO mode. Okay, well, hold on, let me see. Yeah, see if I change things, it's gonna be a problem. And I might've just messed my screen capture up. So, all right, normally, see, it says one and two, but I can actually add four total tracks to the output and also 10 total for the input but uh anyway four on the output and those extra two channels in stereo so in their headphones they'll have a different mix than me and that's great but again going back to the host pc and let me make this full screen again i can control the q mix but i will not hear it from that software it's important to know that. So, because I can't hear it, well, okay, well, that's a problem. You can, though, if you install Listen To. Now, if there's any other plugins that allow you to listen to what a doll is putting out, and it's either cheaper or free, which I highly doubt it's free, but maybe there is, because I know that Reaper has Ninjam, but I'm not sure how to set that up, and not everybody uses Reaper, so... I'm going to suggest Audio Movers Listen To. And you can download this plugin for free, try it out, like I said earlier, and then even if you have a slow internet connection, you can put this on one of the lower quality settings so you can hear the audio while you're in ASIO mode. That's the only reason you really need this, because if you have it in regular wave out, 
it sounds perfectly fine, okay? So just make sure if you're recording, and I highly recommend using ASIO unless you absolutely can't do it, but the idea is that we're going to have our audio output through this, and the way Listen To works is really simple. I'm already in here. I think if I hit log in, it'll work. Yeah, okay, so I'm logged in now. I'm going to change this to, we'll call this Parsec2, okay? I'm going to make sure my quality is what I want it to be, and usually I have it on 16-bit because why have it any lower? And then the buffer, this is important, the latency. The longer this is, the better off you're on with a slow connection, but the problem is you're hearing your audio one second later, okay? Which may or may not be a good thing. So you can put it to the lowest setting that you want because both of these computers are in the same location right now. I can have the latency very low, set it to PCM 16-bit, and it'll work. I might even be able to have it on PCM 32-bit and it'll still work. But let's just keep it on 16-bit, 0.1 seconds. You start the transmission, okay? And when you start the transmission, then the motor starts running. No, uh, I can hit copy link, okay? So copy link, and here's the cool thing. In Parsec, you can go to window mode, and then open up your email, which I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to email myself this link. And what I'm going to do is actually open up that email. I'm not going to show this on screen, but I'm opening the email up. And I'm going to enable the FX like I was doing before. Actually, let me move this down to one of the... I'll move it to the guitar track. So I'll enable I don't know, one of the mid-range ones up here. I'll just do the high shelf. I always like high shelf stuff. So I'll do, I don't know, B. So I'm going to connect to this on my cell phone. The Listen To app does not work right now. So I'm just going to open this on my browser. All right, so you can see this on screen right now. So once I connect, it's streaming. And unfortunately, my screen capture software on the smartphone does not record directly. It's actually recording the microphone, so it's going to sound a little crappy. But uh, here, I'm going to hit play anyway. So that's coming through my phone. Actually, doesn't sound too bad. So I'm going to boost up. And maybe I'll cut some. Okay, I don't know why it decided to do that. Get really loud. So, one thing I forgot to show, which I don't have on this host PC right now which I'll bring up on my normal one. And I'm sorry, I, I just, you know, this computer is not set up for, for doing this properly. So normally if you are using ASIO, the audio is going to be muted anyway, but if for some reason it's not, go to your Windows Mixer, you click that speaker icon in the bottom right corner, click Mixer, and then go all the way over to Parsec, and click mute and you can also you know the fader will normally be up here so bring it all the way down and then click the mute button just to be sure okay because you don't want the non listen to audio coming through if you're using a desktop or laptop computer that you have a digital audio workstation already installed in you can actually use something called listen to receiver and what that lets you do, I'll put that as my first plugin, is connect to a session. So I'm going to paste that link that I got earlier, connect to it, and now I'm connected to the session. All right, so normally I would have this on the host PC, but I don't have these plugins installed on there because they all have serial numbers and all that stuff, and I didn't really want to bother with it, all right? I'm just being honest. So... Sonarworks Reference or ARC if you have speakers. These are basically the only two plugins that can do that. 
Other ones don't work as well. I lean more towards ARC these days for that. But, if you have headphones, and if you have all these headphones, then I recommend the LCD2 Classic. And they have their own plug-in, and you can take a picture of your ear, and apparently it's supposed to sound better or whatever. <laughs> I don't know, because I don't have one of these headphones, and I couldn't tell you. That's what the aural map part thing is. And if you have reference, Waves NX is another good thing to try. And this plugin simulates putting speakers in a control room. They also have their Abbey Road Studio, whatever plugin that does the same thing, which is worth checking out, at least demoing. But normally, you could probably just get away with using Sonarworks Reference if you're using headphones. And you want to have this on the host computer so that you're not working with this on a slower device. All right. And this is just when you're setting up, by the way. Once you set everything up, just like with the plugins that are on the tracks where I was just showing you, oh yeah, we can do that and then we can compress it, see what it sounds like. We're doing this while the musician is playing, not recording, but playing, getting things set up. And you want to have your assistant, which by the way, yes, you need an assistant and you need a way to communicate with your assistant. So either by cell phone or walkie talkie, because you're not going to be in the same room and you need to be able to talk to them. Just like at a big studio, you'd be able to talk over the PA system. So yeah, you need to be able to talk to your recording assistant so that you can tell them, the microphone needs to be closer or move because there's too much low end, doesn't sound right. Whatever the case may be, you need to be able to communicate with them very easily and effectively. So once your settings are all set, disable them because you don't want to have any latency. That's, see how it says samples down here, SPLS? That stands for samples. And once I disable the plugin, it goes back to zero samples. No latency when recording because we don't want to have anything messing with the processor we don't want to have anything messing with the RAM well it's going to be in but it's going to be out of the processing signal and no we're not recording with it now if you wanted to do that which I highly recommend not doing for the biggest reason is that there's no point in doing it because you're using digital plugins not analog hardware but if you want to do that for some reason if you insist Right click on the track record button, and yes, you have to do this with each track. Find track input FX, and then you choose your plugins here. Let me add, I'll add Navy on here, okay? Now these will be recorded, and there's no going back. And that's why I do not recommend doing it this way. But if you are doing it this way, obviously get rid of your other plugins that are already on the track. And by the way, we call this baking it in. And once it's baked in, there's no going back. So click that. You'll find your FX. You can add it just like normal, but you have to access the track effects this way. It's called track input FX chain. Again, I do not recommend doing this. But if you really want to simulate recording in a big studio, you can do it this way. Just be aware that you might cause glitches with your recording. Even on newer computers, there's still the possibility. So I really, really recommend disabling the plugins while you're recording. As soon as you're finished your recording, you can click on here, Control A, and then that selects all your tracks. Hit Enable. All your effects are back on. Okay. The only effect I would ever use while recording is either delay or reverb while recording vocals because singers like to hear reverb on their vocal usually. But that's it. And by the way, that would be a zero latency reverb. Not one of these that have even a little bit of extra samples. No, I want something that has zero latency, is very low on CPU, very low on RAM. I hope you all understood this tutorial. If not, then go back and watch it again.